So if you're considering hosting a student teacher or you've been asked to serve as a cooperating teacher and to host student teachers, today's webcast is going to deal with modeling, easing your student teachers into it, um, providing uh, coaching and feedback, co-teaching and informing so that you are ready to perform and do a great job as a cooperating teacher. Keith Dills. I'm the Pittsburgh Pedagogue and I'm the Dean of the College of Education at Slippery Rock University. And we ask many, many um, teachers to serve as a cooperating teacher, to give back to the profession and to provide coaching and feedback. And what many uh, teachers look back on their uh, preparation say was the most influential and impactful experience that they have um, all the way through their experiences. And so the number one thing is to model show exactly how you perform, have your students, student teachers really pay attention to what you're doing. And I would ask them to deconstruct what you're doing. I'd have them sit in the back of the classroom for the first lesson with a pen and paper, and then you do your lesson, um, making sure it's one of your really terrific ones and you're demonstrating the kind of things that you want your student teacher to do. After the lesson, then you have a conference and debrief and look to see what did they notice? What are some of the things that they saw you do that um, maybe aligned with the things that they learned? When, when did the theory come, to li come alive? And then you provide feedback on what they've said and show them maybe what they didn't notice and then show them your lesson plan. What is it that you put together? How is your plan different than what actually happened? What uh, questions did you plan out? How did you respond to students uh, initiating questions that you didn't expect? Um, what were the procedures? So that deconstruction, that analysis, and then that coaching and feedback and conference, having a dialogue about what took place is so vitally important. So model, model what it is that you'd like students to do, your, your student teachers to do, and model what it is that um, um, the procedures, how to interact with students, both um, the, the cognitive uh, domain, and so what intellectual um, things will you be modeling in terms of uh, creating disequilibrium or asking questions that are evocative and, and probing and motivational, um, but also what about the, the humanistic uh, affective domain? How did you interact with students and were you smiling and uh, were you showcasing the good things that you want your student teacher to do? Those are the kind of things that you're going to want to model 100% um, of the time. Number two is ease your student teachers into teaching. So um, maybe what you want to do is consider um, after 100% of your teaching and modeling, you, you ease your your student in by week two that they're teaching one of the classes. And so um, you're sitting there and you're watching them teach that one class and you're intently listening to what they are doing and what they are saying and um, giving feedback, but only enough feedback. Don't overwhelm them. Don't give them too much. Give them just enough. And I would use the four to one rule or maybe a three to one rule, which is give them positive reinforcement catch them being good, really paying attention to the positive things going on, and then uh, one area for, for improvement for each of those three um, uh, things that you see was good. Catch them being good, reinforce them. You have uh, some student teachers that will have egos that are, that are tender and um, they're not sure if they're going to be good teachers. Boy, someone has faith in them, some of them showing uh, confidence in them, somebody, pepping them up and, and give them a good pat on the back, um, it can go a long way. So listen intently and use that three or four to one ratio in terms of feedback, uh, positive to, to uh, areas for improvement. Um, so in terms of easing them back into it, take attendance. So take some of these things off of their, their plate so that they can focus on the aspects of, of teaching. Um, I know a lot of 
uh, novice teachers and student teachers, it's a blur by the end of the, cl of the class. And so um, there's so much that they're trying to remember and trying to do. Um, just think of a centipede. If a centipede had to think about every leg that they had to move, they'd never go anywhere. So uh, help your students not to be a centipede and have to move all the legs that they eventually will have to move. Help them to focus on teach this lesson, I'll take attendance. I'll provide you maybe with a PowerPoint. I'm going to scaffold your approach to teaching, just like I would scaffold my students, which is um, I'm going to give you only the amount of help that you need, the, the training wheels, so to speak, to get up and get running. And then we're going to ease those training wheels and that scaffolding off so that you are then taking over and doing the things that... Um, you can do without help. Maybe it's a graphic organizer. Um, I would have a pre-conference, look at the lesson plans and see how solid do these plans look and then you can fill in the blanks or give them assistance as you start to see how much help do they need to get up and running. But then of course, pull that back um, as they start to take off. So uh, listen intently. Um, when they ask a question and, the, and um, the student teacher does not get the response that they expected, be listening so closely that you can identify on Bloom's taxonomy um, exactly what level the questions were and how old were the students that they asked this question. Was this an abstract um, high level question that, you, that the student teacher didn't provide the scaffolding or was asking um, of a, a student so young that they weren't prepared um, to do an evaluation or to evaluate? Or did, did you provide the evidence for uh, students that, that do have the intellectual capacity to answer those questions? Um, be ready for those kind of hints and listen that carefully to the lesson because that coaching and feedback, the literature is absolutely clear, is the most important thing. We know that experience alone doesn't teach. It's the reflection on that, uh, that teaching and that experience. And the more knowledgeable other that leads that reflection, that gets the, the, the student teacher to remember what they taught, to reconsider what their choices were and why they taught in the way that they did. And the next time around, um, have a plan to maybe do it better and to apply the literature, say Bloom's taxonomy in a way that uh, is more effective for the students that they're um, uh, teaching. The Danielson framework is something that a lot of school districts are using for their performance reviews and in terms of target ways to teach. It's an excellent framework. It's what we use at Slippery Rock University for our student teachers. And so many of you will be aware uh, of the Danielson framework and be using that tool. Um, what we have is, is explained at target acceptable and unacceptable, um, the performance um, that we expect out of student teachers in all the different areas. And so that's nice to sit down to look at what is, are the goals of our student teachers in all the different areas and um, what's our plan for improvement and what are the student teachers doing that's, that's so strong. So the Danielson framework can be a, a, an excellent tool in terms of setting out the objectives of what we're trying to do and, and, and guidance for provi providing feedback. Co-teaching is um, another uh, thing that I would absolutely suggest that student teachers and their cooperating teachers be involved in. Why? So if you have 25 students, some of which are just doing terrifically, others of which um, may have special needs, may be struggling in certain areas, uh, may have dyslexia, or uh, just the need for extra specialized help. If you have two folks in the classroom, why not as uh, you get to week four or five and the student teacher is teaching, say, 50% of the classes or maybe even 75% of the classes, um, why not have one of the, uh, either the cooperating teacher or the student teacher providing tutoring? And so one model is you have three students with 
the student teacher in the very beginning for one or two periods uh, of the day where the student teacher is not observing the modeling going on in the cooper the, the cooperating teacher is doing but the cooperating teacher is doing the teaching of the whole class and the three students are getting tutoring in reading in writing in math with the student teacher on specific areas and then as the student teacher starts to take over and they're teaching the whole class, the cooperating teacher, after they've listened and provided lots of feedback and coaching and the cooperating teacher or the student teacher seems to be doing well on their own, then you strategically again switch off. And so the th three students, maybe it's the same three students or maybe you're rotating through, you're looking to get marked improvement in, in specific areas, you have the cooperating teacher providing the tutoring to those three in the back of the classroom, in your, so your, your reading station where you have um, three chairs and a desk and, and a place for the cooperating teacher to provide that tutoring. Um, it could be an excellent approach um, to not only doing whole class teaching, but also providing that tutoring to get improvement for um, students in a strategic way. And then finally, inform. Um, inform your students about the assessment system that your school has. What data is available from standardized tests and other data that's accumulated for, for, uh, on, on students that can be informative um, for coming up with strategies to help tailor and be uh, specific in approaches for students to help them with their specific needs. Is there a handbook that talks about emergency procedures um, um, and other procedures that uh, student teachers should be aware of? Provide that handbook and of course go over that. What's the curriculum um, even before student teachers um, start when they get assignment? Provide the book and the, and the, the, and the curriculum um, and give them the, the philosophy behind this and, and, and inform them on, on what might be different from the teacher preparation um, approach to say reading and what the school district expects in, in terms of reading and what's a balance between the two so that um, the students get the best uh, experience in terms of learning and the student teacher gets a chance to practice and use both the school district's ap approach and maybe other new uh, approaches that are supported by new technologies and this might be an opportunity for the cooperating teacher to learn from the student teacher for sure and then finally the parent information what information is available what opportunities are there inform the student teacher about how you conduct that relationship and how you build that relationship and and give them that information and model exactly how uh, our student teachers should be involved in uh, in parents in terms of creating those relationship and provide those experiences for them inform them how to do it who they are uh, model it and then give them the opportunity to build those parent relationships um, because that can be so important and vital to um, moving forward and building a strong learning community. So there you have it. Model for your student teachers. Um, give them the opportunity to ease into student teaching and provide them the scaffolding and the supports that they need and then pull them away when you can. Listen intently and provide that encouragement. Co-teach with your student teacher and inform your student teacher. I'm Keith Dills, I'm the Pittsburgh Pedagogue, and I'm the Dean of the uh, College of Education at Slipper Rock University. I wish you all the best of, of, of luck as you in, embark on providing um, a future for not only a student teacher, but potentially the thousands of others that that student teacher will impact as they um, embark on their profession. Best of luck. Thank you.